Okay, we're back. This is part three of uh, building the quad laser cannon on the Millennium Falcon build. Um, this section now we're going to look at painting these turrets. Um, what I've done first to start off this video, I've glued these uh, end bits of the turrets onto the actual base. I've used Gale Force 9 Hobby Glue to do this. Obviously you don't really need to see me apply glue, you know how to apply glue, you must do. Um, also with this I've used the Catalyst, which is a rapid cure, just allows the glue to dry a bit quicker when sprayed on. Um, so the next step will involve mounting them up. Uh, usually you should do this in a ventilated area, but usually I get my spray stick, I go outside and I spray them all on there, so I'll use stuff like this, a bit of blue tack on there, and I will stick it on there, spray it, um, and then spray it until it's got an even coat on each side. So that is the next step. So I'll just apply these to there, and I will be right back. Okay, we are back. Um, I've applied these to the stick, so they're not coming off there in any sort of hurry. So we can go ahead and spray them now. Uh, we'll probably spray both sides. I'm not sure how many times it will take because uh, underneath these there are details um, But they're currently stuck down so I'll we'll probably spray them flip them over and then respray the bottoms same with these You're gonna just really spray one side at a time So right, that's what we're gonna do. Um, I've seen a lot of people use different types of spray um, Various different stores sell spray paint but I'm going to go for acrylic uh, spray paint and I know um, I prefer to use Games Workshop products because I know they do really really good undercoat based spray as you can see this is a uh, extremely flammable and an irritant you don't want to get this on your skin and even if you do you want to wash it off um, there are other sorts of hobby sprays you can use. If you need any help, just ask in the description. I can probably recommend a couple. Um, there's things like Army Painter. I've been told that Halfords do different types of acrylic spray and various other companies. Um, I've used this before and I trust this. So this is what I'm gonna do. So you get your spray, obviously. Give it a good, good shake. Obviously I'm not gonna spray on camera but it's just going to be a case of on one side, other side, need to dry for a good, a good 10, 15 minutes until we know it's dry and then either respray anything we've missed or then move on to the sections underneath. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to do the first couple of sprays and then I'm going to come back to you. Okay, that's the first, uh, first spray of primer on top of that. That's looking pretty good. Um, I think I'm going to give it one more little prime on the top, then I'll flip them over and I'll reprime the bottom side. So let's cut to that. Right, I'm back. They've been sprayed twice. Um, I'm going to go over it again, shake it up. Just a, kind of a demonstration on how we're doing the actual spraying here. So we don't want to be doing this. It's going to leave too much spray on the actual miniatures. It's going to blot everything up. So what you want to be, you want to be Probably about, mm, probably about a foot away at most. And what we do, we just spray right across the top. Nice sweeping motion. That's it, that's all we wanna do. Less is more in this case. So we'll let those dry and then we'll see where we are. Back in a sec. Right. The uh, pieces are done now, um, all dry. Uh, they've been undercoated with the white spray. Um, so if we put them together. It's all very nice and smooth. A lovely quad laser cannon. It looks really good. I did a dry fit um, just to test the pieces to see they went together okay. Um, obviously it's rubbed off the paint uh, that the paint on the bit, the joist that holds it in the middle there. But that's not to worry really to be honest. So it's good. Right, next part um, will be 
The first coat of paint which I have chosen to apply, Grey Surface Primer uh, by Vallejo. Um, ideally it is a surface, pl um, surface primer, um, so that means uh, you put it on before you uh, spray. You, you can use this instead, I suppose, to prime the miniature. But it seems to be a suitable colour because it's very, very light grey. So I'm going to apply that now and I'll be right back. So I've got my uh, medium brush. Uh, you can get any sort of brush to be honest. We're just base coating it so you don't need a particularly fancy brush. So we need to get our paint. Uh, surface primer should be wet enough, yeah you can see it needs a good shake to start with but there's our surface primer. Um, I'm using this as a palette at the moment. And you just want to put your paint on a palette or uh, this is actually a bathroom tile but I have various other plastic palettes you can use I don't know, I don't know plastic lids or yogurt pots or things like that. Uh, you don't want to get too much paint on your brush, so you can wipe a bit off. Um, the advantage of us painting, painting the, uh, well, undercoating it white to start with, means that we get a brighter contrast on any subsequent colour going on top. So, as you can imagine, we just paint that on there, right. Paint that to the entire miniatures and I'll be right back. Applied now. Um, it might take a couple of coats to apply it. Um, you get quite a good result with that. It, and that stands up pretty well. You just have to do the uh, blast uh, scorch um, dark markings around the end of the barrels. Um, I'll probably finish that off with uh, a black wash. Um, it looks alright. Uh, but I think I want to go a bit further with it, so I've been doing a bit of palette experimentation over here and for the next step I don't just come up with these colours on the fly. Uh, so I've got the whole piece here. Um, so the first colour I achieved by using a uh, two parts to three parts colour uh, USA air colour, so uh, Vallejo Moldair at USA Grey in two parts with three parts ratio random tan or radom tan well, these are both air colors so they come out pretty wet so that you that's pretty good it'll take a few coats to put it on the design to go through an airbrush at the end of the day but you want to keep your pet uh, your paints wet um, it keeps them thinner and it doesn't build up on the model and makes it look much cleaner. Now, I was going to apply this and I thought it looks it looks alright. I tried lightening up a bit and then it started to look a bit too much cream. And then I came across this colour in my, well, my box of colours. <laughs> now, this is one I had not really used before. Um, this is Vallejo Air uh, Grey RLN. I have no idea where I picked this up, but I think think it's very 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 close to the actual uh, color of the uh, well pre-painted piece so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go over the top of these gray turrets with that color now um, using uh, my standard brush all cleaned and washed off and just lay it on and I will jump cut and they will be done so there we go folks, that's the paint applied, looks pretty good actually I think. Um, next step is going to be to apply uh, Citadel Shade uh, Nullin Oil and this will be applied to all the recesses uh, just to add a kind of a dark shade because it's not going to be all pure like this. So we get our brush. Same brush again, it's, it's kind of thick, you don't need any sort of detail brush. And we're going to apply this to the miniatures. And I will jump cut until that's done. Cool. Right, you can see I've applied the shade now to that. It's, obviously it's still a little bit wet on this, this piece because it's shiny. 
but yeah, as you can see from the other pieces it's darkened all the recesses uh, don't worry we haven't made a massive mess of everything but you need to understand when when you shade a miniature with such uh, flat uh, straight angles you need to make sure that the shade doesn't pull um, it doesn't look too streaky so you just need to keep going with one strong uh, brush and then pulling in the different areas just make sure it doesn't pull too much otherwise you can have some problems and there we go um, next step will be to uh, start highlighting so bringing up the higher areas of the color on the miniature again but obviously shade takes a while to dry so I'm going to leave that to dry and I'll be right back okay now well, that's done um, the next step is to get our brush back again and this time what we're going to do we're going to go over the top ends of the barrel not putting much on we're just going to do one nice fine coat on the top just to clean it up makes the top sections really pop and the bottom sections I suppose as well need a bit of wash in there just to finish that bit off I will highlight the top of these bits now so all the high areas we're just going to use one solid coat just around the edges and things like that so I'll cut to that when that's done. Right, I'm at this stage now. Um, I think the final highlight is on there. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is paint the ends black. Now, I don't actually have a black. All I've got is my Monlair black. But I'm gonna give it a go with that and I'm gonna see how it goes. Right, so I'm gonna paint the ends black. Maybe a few other details. So I'll cut back to that in a sec. Okay, that's the black gone on there now. Um, it's gone on quite well, um, but we're missing one key aspect we want to finish off this miniature, and that's the uh, scorch marks down the barrels. Um, now I have found two ways of doing this, and I have to be honest, I prefer my second way. But the first way is pretty simple if you want to use it. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to get our lovely dry brush out again. Just getting some black on it, rubbing as much off it as we can, and we're coming up to the miniature. And then we're just going down the barrel, just to form these kind of streaks. Right, I'm going to do that, and I'll jump back to it. Okay, we've done that now. Uh, you can apply as much as you want down that barrel. It's all up to you. It's your miniature. Uh, I've also added a bit on the top here. So I've done it that way. The other way to do it is to continue doing it that way. Or if you're like myself and have all these fancy air paints, you have an airbrush. You can clean it up a bit and spray on a bit of the, the base coat color again. And it kind of gives this kind of smooth effect with a burnt uh, glow for it. I'm going to continue doing it this method because this is the way I want to finish it. And then I will display the final measure then. There you have it folks. Project finished. Well, pretty much finished. <laughs> um, if you want to take this a bit further, I would probably apply um, a varnish on the top. Uh, a matte varnish, not a gloss varnish. Uh, it's going to save you um, chipping. See, we've got some of the paint coming off here. It'll just lock in that, and then it won't, the paint won't chip off, which should be pretty good. Um, yeah, I think it turned out quite well. Uh, obviously, it's a lot toned down. I added quite a lot of black with our uh, our dry brush on the final stage, uh, dry brushing all these, and this went crazy. And I was like, oh, it's a bit of a mess. So I went back over over this with the paint, um, with actually with my airbrush as well. Uh, which gives it that kind of effect but you can you can still apply this just take a little bit more care with the dry brush you want to be um well kind of like dabbing it just like uh i can't remember the name of the term of it now uh oh, stick
stippling kind of, like stippling paint on. That's the best way to achieve it if you don't have an airbrush. Anyway, that looks pretty good. This was dry brush obviously on the side here. Uh, these, these kind of vents. So yeah, I think that turned out all right. Um, it may stay like that, it may change. I may strip the paint off and uh, have another go in maybe a few months or so. Uh, I don't know, but it's a metal piece. So stripping the paint is fairly easy to do. Um, don't worry about that. So if you mess up or it's just become a horrible disaster after watching my tutorials or videos, <laughs> I should say, um, don't worry, it is fixable. Um, I might do a video on uh, removing paint from metal miniatures. Um, there is a video on my channel about doing it, about using brake fluid, but it's all right, but I think I found a better way of doing it other than brake fluid because brake fluids can be quite harmful to you. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, if you want to comment or uh, give us a like, that'd be really good. Uh, obviously, we're going to keep going with the series, uh, especially with the metal pieces, doing any more customization, things like that. Um, I think it turned out all right and it blends quite well with the hole so I'm quite pleased with it and if you're pleased with it in the end that's all that matters. Um, right I'm signing off on this one. I'll be here out. <laughs> you stay safe and I will see you next time. Thanks.